had, has made it clear it is not sufficient to do something for the EHS people. We generally have to lower the limits uh, in order to avoid EHS. I think that's a very important thing. So uh, there are several attempts. Um, we have discussed uh, the big legal procedures in the US and we have to know that in the US the situation is different. Please uh, have the first, uh, the next uh, uh, slide. Yes. Uh, in the US we have uh, the possibility that we can attack a legislation as, a, as such. In Europe, we first have to be aware of the fact that it's not an affair of the European legislation, it's national legislation. And here we uh, can, uh, in principle, uh, uh, force the um, member states to to lower the limits because um, we all know uh, ICNIP limits which we apply now are not sufficient. But one way we, uh, we uh, usually do not realize that in Europe the local authorities have uh, much many possibilities for regional planning and they use it very seldom. We have to enforce this uh, point very much. Next slide, please. Uh, how can we do it? The situation, in my opinion, has improved very much in the last years because we have to apply precautionary principle, but we are already beyond that. We have some political statements, or politically uh, valuable statements, which we can apply for legal actions. Uh, so uh, I just remember uh, the uh, statement of the uh, Committee on Social and Economical Affairs, I don't remember the precise name, where uh, each EHS is acknowledged as an illness. So uh, that is uh, very important for legal procedures. But uh, in order to push this through, we have to combine many groups. Here, there are some uh, mentioned in this slide, uh, there's a new association of scientists uh, be, uh, and separated from this, uh, also an association of uh, lawyers. Uh, and I think it's very important that these two groups more or less uh, combine. There is one lawsuit in Brussels uh, attacking generally the limits, which I think is not so effective. The next slide, please. Uh, I think it's more ex uh, effective to use the neighborhood legislation because there you have not to prove in general that uh, something happens with electromagnetic radiation. You, uh, it's sufficient to prove an individual damage. Damage which it has not to have a very high level. And I want to remind you that uh, the European Court of Human Rights has published a paper last year uh, giving conditions for applying this neighborhood rights. And uh, this is very helpful for us. Uh, we, uh, it's, as I said, it's sufficient that you have one person who has a medically uh, uh, acknowledged uh, disadvantage. Uh, I say disadvantage, not real illness. So next slide, please. And uh, it, this has been published in the official journal of the European Union. Here is the, um, uh, the uh, reference. And we are trying to do this in Germany in a lawsuit. We have a group of people uh, near a base station in the main uh, radiation direction of the 
uh, base station. And we uh, have no EHS people among them. But uh, some objective criteria, like heartbeat variability and other things. So uh, we can prove that these people have personal disadvantages, also reaction tests and so on. And this makes me optimistic. I think uh, court cannot de deny these personal disadvantages. So I want to conclude with a very optimistic view by having several such uh, court cases uh, where we use neighborhood laws, then we have to change the national legislations. And with this, uh, I hope that uh, we can have some hope in this situation. Thank you very much.